With photography, I found that you win some days and you lose some days. And on this particular day, when I went to test this film, I think I lost. So this video is about Lomography's Lomochrome Metropolis. I recently made a video about the 35 millimeter version and I said that I felt like I liked it, but that it probably wouldn't be in my everyday rotation and that it was a bit more project specific, meaning that you would probably use it for a specific project rather than just generally going out to shoot. So after testing the 35 millimeter, I thought I should also test the 120 medium format version to see if the larger negative and a more vivid image might make me think differently about the film but it didn't quite work out. But let me go back a little bit. So this film is part of Lomography's Lomochrome lineup. Uh, I thought there was more, but there's only two. There's the Lomochrome Metropolis and Lomochrome Purple. And Metropolis has more of like a desaturated, muted look, that kind of bluish green tones that make it good for shooting in moody and like gritty environments. You can rate this film anywhere between 100 and 400 ISO. And I shot two rolls and with the first, I rated it at 200 because it was um, kind of dull. I didn't want to rate it at 100 and not be able to meter correctly. And then I rated the second one at 400 when it started to get darker. So I took these photos on the Mamiya RB67 with the 90 millimeter F 3.8 and it was here where my problem started. Not with the camera, it was all user error, um, but I was trying to rush things and with medium format, you can't rush things. But sometimes you just see the shot coming and you fire it off and you realize that you haven't wound the film on from the last photo or that your metering was off. But I'm gonna take you through the photos and I can kind of show you what I mean by um, things going wrong and what I think about the photos as I was going. So I loaded the first roll and rated it at 200. I set up the shot and turned the film back um, into portrait mode because with the RB67, you can turn the, um, the film back from landscape to portrait mode. So you don't have to turn the camera if you want to get portraits. Genius. So two people enter the frame and I go to make the photo, fire off the shutter and the dark slide, which is this metal plate here was still in the camera, which shouldn't happen. If it, it's designed to stop you from firing and exposing the film um, when you don't want to. But so, for some reason, when this was in portrait mode with the dark slide in, it fired. So that means that I have a blank photo. And if I hadn't wound it on, but which you can see I did, it would have been fine, but I did. So photo one of 10 wasted. Look at me, quietly seething, idiot. So, okay, first shot, easy mistake to make. You haven't used this camera in a while, be better from now on. Then another couple enter the frame. So I make that photo. I would have preferred them facing me, but really I just wanted to get some people in this kind of mess of like lines and reflections. This is the unedited shot showing you those muted colors of Metropolis. Some of these photos I'm going to show you are edited, but some are just the initial scans that I got kind of straight from the scanner. Here's a shot of the Shard, so you know I was in London. So then I moved around to St. James Park and I see this building um, and I think that it would be nice to make a photo of someone walking to the building, maybe like cropped foreground out of focus with the building um, in focus in the background. So someone walks past and I get the focus ready so that I can uh, meter it and then when the right person comes in, I can take that photo. I waited for 15 minutes, no one entered the frame, so I just took the photo and moved on. This one could have been nice. I liked how the reflections from the tops of the buildings were lining up with the other half of the buildings through the window, but because it was quite dull, again, um, rating it at 200 meant that I had to slow the shutter down, which resulted in a blurry image. So, so far, not so good. Then the sun started coming through for sunset, so I wanted to see how the film handled that golden light on top of the building. This was the scan straight from the Epson, and here is the edited scan with some minor color and exposure adjustments. As you can see, because of the desaturation in the film, you lose a lot of that color in the sky and at the top of the building, um, but you do get some of those grittier, moodier tones in the shadows. So as the light was starting to go, I thought I should just finish off the roll, which was about four photos, just so I could move on to the next roll, which would be rated at 400, and it meant I could handle that, the lower light better. So I set up somewhere along Oxford Street, and I wanted to get someone stepping across the frame in the foreground, uh, with someone in the background kind of framed between their legs, um, but it didn't quite work out. So attempt one, not great, but 
it was just a good test of my reflexes for the first shot. Attempt two, double exposure. Attempt three, this was the closest I got to anything like what I wanted. I like the framing and the guy in the background looks like he's looking directly at the person in the foreground, which is cool. So this one's probably my favorite of the, the four. And attempt four isn't even worth showing. Next roll. So it rated at 400 and I used a tripod for the slower shutter speeds. Um, it got dark quite quick, but I actually quite like this first shot. It's nothing special, um, but I got lucky with the taxi in front uh, starting to reverse. So some of those lights just added something else with those lights coming in from the right of frame. But then soon after this photo, I picked up the camera, which was on the tripod and put it over my shoulder and started walking. And as I was walking, I could feel something catching on my backpack. And then the whole back of the camera fell off from head height onto the concrete. It was this metal catch here, which connects the, the film back to this mirror module. It had somehow uh, unfastened itself on my backpack and just fell off. And now there's a nice uh, dent and scratch. Luckily, it wasn't the mirror or the lens that fell off but I wasn't sure if the film was even still on the roll inside or if I, I don't know if I'd broken the whole thing, um, but I was able to take the next photo and the film advanced okay, so I kind of just went with it. Just another thing to add to a bad day out. Then sticking with the car theme, I saw this Porsche and framed it within the corridor. I like the symmetry of the windows in the background, uh, but maybe the shot would have been nicer if the walls weren't one of those temporary walls they put up for like a building site. But it is what it was. But I think by this point, I was just going through the motions, probably just trying to finish the roll <laughs> to, to go home because it I wasn't feeling it. Next was this kind of little outdoor bar scene. Um, with the year we've had, I thought it was quite nice seeing someone just enjoying one of the simple things in life, which is just having a drink in a bar. Even though they were on their own, I thought it still looked quite nice. But when I set up the photo, he was looking in my direction and then at the last minute turned away. So I think it would have been nicer if he was looking at least even forward or in my direction. But in terms of like, the color, this is actually quite accurate to how I remember seeing it. I think with other photos from this role, it has completely muted all the colors and changed the way it actually looked. But this one, I feel is quite accurate. Then there's a reflection in the puddle, creative. Uh, so this was the last photo in London. And then a few days later, I was with my friend Jordan, who you might remember from the Fujifilm industrial video. Uh, we were shooting a project for him and I grabbed a quick frame in this scene that we were shooting in. We had some beautiful light that day and I could just tell by looking through the viewfinder that it was gonna be a really nice photo. Um, and I'm really happy with how this one came out but I had to do a little bit of editing to get the colors back to how I wanted. So this was the original. And then here's the edited version, probably my favorite photo from the two rolls. And then the last few here were just a few quick portraits of my son. So I could finish off the roll and send it off. Um, but yeah, look at this guy. Okay, so that was it. Not my best day out shooting, but that's kind of something that I wanted to end on and talk about here. With photography or any creative endeavor, you're gonna have days where things just don't work out. And especially with film photography, because the margin for error becomes so much smaller. You're gonna have days where you load the film wrong or you don't load it at all. Um, and things just don't go your way and that's okay. The photos made in this video weren't anything special. Um, I wasn't shooting for a specific project or a job. I was just using it as a test to see what this film look, looked like in the environments that I shoot in and I failed. But the main thing is that you're out there and putting in the reps to eventually get better. I'm not an expert by any means, but part of the reason why I started this channel was to try new things and share my experience with you so that it might help you with whatever you're trying to make. I'm learning every time I go out to shoot and with this one, I learned some days you just suck. Thank you.